Hey, welcome to Johnny in Japan. Today I'm going to talk about Ryan Boundless and negative foreigners who live in Japan. So check it out. What I want to ask you is, what is your general impression of Japanese people? Well, Japanese people hide themselves from what's real. And what I mean by that is that they're fake people. You'll never get a true response from them. They portray themselves as being super polite. However, they're incredibly fake. For example, you could ask them something as simple as if they're enjoying the food at the izakaya outing with your coworkers, and every last one of them will say that everything's perfect and they like everything. But in reality, they're being fake and lying to you so as to themselves and everyone else. Now, try and imagine the same situation but in a different scenario, like out on a date. So you're desperately trying to learn about this Japanese girl and asking her all the questions imaginable. Now, if you didn't know any better, you'd think she was being honest, polite, and sincere. However, newsflash, she's not being real with you, nor will she ever. So she's simply following the steps as outlined in her black Japanese book of deceit to fool you into thinking that you're actually achieving something positive by getting to know her. Japanese people don't want to open themselves, especially if your facial features don't match that of a Japanese person. You can fucking forget it. Bottom line, making friends with the Japanese is one thing. You can feel like your best friends, but they will drop you out of their life faster than you can say weeaboo. I swear to fucking God, how much each of you cherish each other's friendship is totally fucking different. Now imagine trying to meet a Japanese and creating a relationship with them into something stronger, meaningful, and life long lasting. Good fucking luck with that. Wow, Ben. Thank you. Thank you for that very clarifying moment. You obviously feel very passionate about the level of deceit and fakeness among Japanese people. Wow, so there was a lot to process there. It was a short clip, but he said a lot. Very angry and clearly very bitter. He seems like uh, the type who came here with unrealistic expectations. When he got here, he had a very nasty wake-up call, and he was severely crushed, and now he's pointing the finger at everyone else except himself. I came here with low expectations, so that way I would be less disappointed by things. He talks about uh, girls. That's his main... Uh, thing he talks about is the girls and I feel like that's probably the major selling point as to why he's so angry. Uh, I feel like he probably came here thought he could use his uh, foreign card to get easy girls and then when he didn't he got mad about it. Now he's very pissy just as pissy as Ryan Boundless it seems. I don't like how Ryan Boundless talks about how a lot of J-bloggers lie maybe they do but here's the thing there's a difference between lying and omitting something a lot of these j vloggers that are really popular some of them i don't like their style i don't like their videos i don't subscribe to them i don't watch them i've i've seen some of their stuff i won't say who they are but you know to be fair play devil's advocate maybe they're just focusing on the positives maybe they don't want to share all their dirty laundry you know on the internet and complain about everything every day like ryan i think that's the right way to go because if you focus all on the negative what good is that going to do you if you if you just look at ryan boundless videos to get a grasp on what japan's like you're not going to want to come here you're not going to want to find out for yourself and i would recommend you find out for yourself do research you know from both sides try to weigh both sides because usually the truth somewhere in the middle there's the people that are super positive and then there's the people that are super negative about japan usually it's somewhere in the middle they're probably both right ryan's probably right i mean to some extent he is right i feel like the way he handles it is wrong and i feel like the way ben handles it uh the person that he interviewed is way wrong uh, i don't know if he still lives here uh, this interview was done back in august of 2017 ironically August 2017 that was the last video he put up was that podcast and then he disabled all of his comments he does uh, upload secret videos to patreon for patrons only I think he just can't handle you know criticism in a public forum so only his hardcore paying fans uh, get to see his videos now and he makes a little over $500 a month from donations imagine that he makes that much money a month from tips just to complain about Japan that's amazing. I mean, f fuck. I mean, I gotta give it to him there. That's pretty smart. Take advantage of that, I guess. I guess more power to him, right? If he's making money doing that, that really lowers the bar. 
for YouTube for J vlogging. If you can make that much money, you know, just bitching about Japan every day, imagine what you could do if you made good videos. <laughs> but anyways, back to this guy. He does make some valid points. I will give him that. I took the side of the, you know, positive J vloggers that Ryan complains about. But I'll, I'll take his side a little bit and say that, you know, they're... There is some grain of truth to what he's saying. Japanese people are non-confrontational. They often won't tell you how they feel about a person or a situation. And that's just the way it is. It's just a different culture. You just have to accept it. You don't have to understand it. You just have to accept it. And I feel like he never accepted it. And he just let that eat away at him. He seems to be very needy. Like he needs the approval, you know, of Japanese people. And because he didn't get it or because he's not, you know, King Gaijin you know, and got the red carpet rolled out for him upon his arrival, that pisses him off. I was like, dude, you're nobody special. <laughs> I guess the point of this video is to say, if you're gonna come to Japan, do your research. Don't just watch a J vlogger or a bunch of J vloggers and get all your information from them. Cause yeah, it's, sometimes they will omit negative aspects of Japan to get more viewers. You can't just rely on one source. It's just like that when you move to any country. It's gonna be a struggle no matter what you see or hear. It's gonna be a struggle to go anywhere. Hell, it's probably a struggle if you live in the States and you move over to the next state. So imagine moving to another country with a different language and a different culture. You have to do your research and you have to prepare and you have to lower your expectations. You can't expect this fantasy world, you know, when you get off the airplane. <laughs> So tell me what you thought of that clip that you heard. Tell me what you think about Ryan Boundless. Are you interested in coming to Japan? Have you ever visited Japan? Do any of you live here now? What are your thoughts on the positives and negatives of living in Japan and Japanese people and Japanese culture? Do you agree with Ryan Boundless's point of view uh, and Ben's assessment? Or do you think they need to just chill? Honestly, they make valid points, I think. But they definitely need to chill out. Ryan's been here for 17 years, I believe. At that point, it's like, you really have no reason to complain because you only have yourself to blame for staying so long. I've only been here a year and a half. Well, I complain, but I do that privately. I don't bitch about it on the internet all the time. He even went to Thailand for a few months, made vlogs bitching about how much he hated Thailand. Then he came back to Japan, bitched some more. Uh, I don't know if he went to China, but I think he got like a work visa for China. I don't know if he ever visited. But if he did, I'm sure he bitched about it there too. Ryan just seems like the kind of guy, and so does Ben, they seem like the kind of people that would be miserable anywhere they go. Probably miserable in their home country, and they'll be miserable anywhere else they go in the world. It's not about Japanese people, it's not about Japanese culture, it's not about, you know, the location. It's about them. And I think that's the even bigger point of this video, is Japan cannot fix you. If you have problems, you can't expect to go to the other side of the world and poof. You, you can just start over. It's true, you can go to another country and you can say, okay, I'm gonna have a new attitude about things. I have a clean slate. In a way, you do have a clean slate because people don't know who you are. You can sort of try to change your way of thinking and be more positive or try to be more outgoing or more bold. But if you have mental problems, if you have a lot of baggage that you never got over, that stuff follows you. It's attached to you. And I know it personally. In a way, I did get to start over. But in a lot of ways, a lot of things, a lot of emotional things from the past, they follow you. <laughs> and uh, you need to understand that. I'm imploring you. If, if you have unresolved issues that you can't get over, don't think that coming to an, any other country, you know, a location is not going to make a difference. You might feel, you know, that high of being a tourist for a while. But after two or three months, it's going to wear off and it's going to sink in that, you're basically the same person. You're just in a different spot. And now you're probably more lonely because you're in a place where either you can't talk to the people because you're not so good at the language or you don't fit in with the culture because you had different expectations of what it's going to be like. And you got a big nasty surprise because you didn't do your research. Fix your shit. Do your research and fix yourself because Japan's not going to fix you for you. Japan can be a gloomy place. It's not all doom and gloom like Ryan Balance would have you believe. But, you know... They do have their own problems, like suicide and overworking. It's a very serious country. At times it can be cold and mechanical, robotic. But hey, that's just the way it is. So if you have some serious mental health issues, like, you know, depression or suicidal thoughts or tendencies, I wouldn't come to Japan. i try to get that fixed first. Japan's not the best place to go if you're not all good up here. If you're not all good up here and you're not good here, it's a very bad place to go. You you really need to be a positive person. You really need to be able to open up your mind to different possibilities, to different points of view. Because if you come here not all good in here, 
then it's going to rip you apart. I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you. Japan doesn't really care about themselves. Like, mental health here, mental health services, it's a joke. People don't take care of each other. They don't take care of their mental health. Suicide is a big problem here. They don't really take care of their own mental well-being, so they're definitely not going to take care of yours. You need to fix your own problems, and I recommend staying where you are and finding professional help where you are to help you with that. So that's all I got to say about that. So tell me what you think in the comments. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you liked the video, click the like button and uh, let me know what you think about it. And I would appreciate a share. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.